Hi guys, how are you doing? I hope you're good. Today we're going to tackle the liver. The way we're going to do this is we're going to look at the big picture first. We're going to look first at how, what the liver does overall and then we're going to look at how its structure and organization allows it to perform those functions. Okay, let's begin. Quite a lot of the liver's function is that we are going to look at is to do with dealing with the nutrients that are coming from the digestive system and so what one of those things so let's let's just kind of categorize these it it kind of deals with the proteins in a certain way it will deal with carbohydrates it will deal with lipids Okay, so fats, fatty acids that have come from digestion, what to do with those, but just putting them into broad categories for now. Sticking with the theme of lipids, we also have the production of bile. So bile is produced by the liver, or the bile salts are produced by the liver, and they exit the liver um, to help in the digestive process for, to break down uh, lipids in the diet. So bile is also produced by the liver and it helps with lipid digestion. Next, we have um, the detoxification. So the liver carries out detoxification. For example, if there's a metabolic waste, um, it comes through the liver and that metabolic waste is converted into something that's less harmful before it exits the liver. So the liver does that important job of detoxification. And we also have the uh, destruction, I guess. We also have, finally, the destruction, destruction of pathogens from food. Okay, so it's very likely that um, the, the substances absorbed um, from the digestive process, it might be that there are pathogens also in that. Um, and therefore, as that stuff arrives at the liver, one of the liver's main, or one of the liver's jobs is to make sure that some of those pathogens are destroyed before the, the blood then goes to the rest of the body. Let's just quickly summarize each of these processes before we then start to look at how the liver structure allows it to do that or these jobs okay so let's look at protein now in terms of protein in terms of protein two main things what the liver does is with excess amino acids because remember in the stomach the proteins would have been digested down to amino acids and the amino acids then absorbed into the blood. Then those amino acids arrive at the liver. Now you don't have, we, we can store carbohydrates, we can store fats, but we can't store proteins. We only make proteins um, that w when we need them. We don't have any store of amino acids. We don't make any proteins just to store amino acids. So excess amino acids are then a problem. So what the liver does with excess amino acids is that the amino acids, okay, is separated into two parts, okay? The amino group is removed, or the amine group is removed, and it forms ammonia. Now, ammonia is highly soluble and highly toxic. So this is not something that we want hanging around in the liver or in the rest of the body. The carbon part of it, or the carbon chain, the carbon chain can be used to uh, produce glucose. Okay, and stored as carbohydrates. So excess amino acids, th this is the story that those excess amino acids follow. The amino group is removed, ammonia is produced. Now that process is deamination, deamination. Okay, so the uh, amino acids are deaminated 
the amino group is removed, it forms ammonia, which is highly toxic and highly soluble. Okay, those two, that's a dangerous combination. Okay, so what then the liver does is it converts the ammonia into, so this ammonia then enters this um, metabolic pathway, which I'll just summarize here. So this met metabolic pathway, I'm going to summarize it, is called the ornithine, ornithine cycle. Now, in the ornithine cycle, the ammonia is combined with carbon dioxide, and what comes out is urea. Now, urea is a more manageable waste product because it is less toxic and less soluble. Okay, so urea is a waste that we have to do something with, but that's that's then the job of the kidneys to separate the urea from the from the blood that leaves the liver. Okay, so we have two important processes there to make a note of the removal of the amino group to produce ammonia, so deamination. Actually, let's just make a note of that because that's the key point. Do, 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 do. So this one, deamination, and followed by here, I guess you're producing urea. I, I, I might call that detoxification. But ornithine cycle to produce urea, I think that should suffice. Okay, so we have that. There's another thing that the liver also does with incoming amino acids, and that is transamination. Transamination. Now, I'm just going to underline the key terms there, okay? Now, transamination is it's just rebalancing the proportion of the 20 amino acids so that the proportion of the amino acids um, coming, leaving the liver is more in line with the body's requirements. The amino acids that you might take in from the diet might not match the composition that the body needs to, to produce all the uh, proteins that, uh, that it needs to. And so what the liver does is a process of transamination, converting one amino acid into another. And therefore, even though the proportions of the amino acids from the diet might not have been right, the proportions of amino acids in the blood going to the rest of the body are more in line with, with the body's requirements. Okay, so that is an important process, converting one amino acid into another amino acid okay and that is called transamination so that is all the protein stuff that we need to be aware of of the liver the liver is also dealing with the carbohydrates arriving from the digestive system so the blood comes to the blood comes to I don't know if this was a good idea um, but yeah the blood uh, comes to the liver from the digestive system, the, the, the carbohydrate intake has been um, uh, hydrolyzed, digested down to monosaccharides such as glucose. So what does the liver do with that? Now, remember that the liver is also heavily involved in glucose homeostasis. The, the liver is, is the key um, one, one of the key effectors of insulin, the hormone insulin and the hormone glucagon. Okay, now remember that the liver, what it can do is, when the glucose is arriving in the presence of insulin, so when insulin is in the blood, then what will happen, so when insulin is present, what will happen is that the glucose that the liver receives will be polymerized condensation reactions, glycosidic bonds being formed, the glucose will be polymerized into glycogen, okay, and stored in the liver. Um, we might just name that process, glyco, 
glycogenesis, okay, glycogenesis, key term, underline it, okay, um, that's not a key term, let's put it in brackets. So when insulin is present, then what the liver does with the incoming uh, glucose in the blood is that it will absorb the glucose into the cells, convert that to glycogen in a process called glycogenesis. I always get mixed up with those. Um, so there we have it, okay? But when the incoming blood has low glucose and when the hormone glucagon is being released by the pancreas, so let's see the opposite situation then. So we have low blood glucose, glu glucagon is now circulating in the blood, the hormone glucagon. In that case, what the liver will do in response is it different, so this hormone will affect the liver differently and therefore in, you know, the signaling events in the liver cells will be different and, and the, the, the proteins inside the liver cells will be working in a different way such that in this case what it will do is in response to detecting the hormone glucagon the liver cells will break down the stored glycogen into glucose monomers and release these into the blood thereby raising the blood glucose level okay so this process we shall name gly glycogenolysis glyco glycogenolysis okay lysis splitting of glycogen all right so glycogenolysis is what we do when we want to break down glycogen to glucose and that's when the hormone glucagon is around okay there's other metabolic changes also happening in response to glucagon um, and insulin but um, that's probably for a different video. Okay, but this uh, stuff is happening. This is how the liver is processing the incoming blood in these two different scenarios. Lipids, let's move on to lipids now. Now the liver is also exposed to incoming blood and you know, from the digestion process, it's, it's getting lots of, uh, so the lipids have been broken down in the digestive system to glycerol, and fatty acids and those fatty acids have been transported to the liver now in that blood and what the liver is doing is then taking those uh, glycerol molecules and fatty acid molecules and repackaging them back into triglycerides i.e. the storage form of lipids okay so it's taking glycerol so glycerol plus fatty acids and it is converting them to tri triglycerides, okay? And then it's packaging these triglycerides up into lipoproteins, lipoproteins, secreting those back out into the blood so that they can be transported to, you know, the, the body's fat stores, okay? So to adipose tissue. It's the liver that's doing that, okay? Um, so that's how it's managing with the lipids. The bile, well, it's, it's producing bile. I don't think there's too much to say that we need to know about here, but bile is also being produced, and the bile that is produced must leave via the bile duct towards the gallbladder where it is stored until it's released into the digestive system to help in the digestion of lipids in the diet or fats in the diet. Okay, let's move on now. This is a more important one. Uh, the detoxification is important to understand in terms of um, metabolic wastes okay so what the liver is able to do is substances that are produced in the body that ha have potentially harmful effects on the body are converted into less harmful things now these um, there might also be substances that have been taken in by accident 
Um, there might also have been things taken intentionally, um, which can be harmful to the body. And what the liver does is processes those things into molecules that are less harmful. Okay, so this is known as detoxification, and we'll look at an example. So things like metabolic wastes, things like drugs, those molecules go to the liver and they are converted into less harmful things. So detoxified, okay, into something less harmful. All right, for example, for example, we have hydrogen peroxide, which is a metabolic waste product. Okay, now hydrogen peroxide is, is converted into H2O, water and oxygen. Much less harmful than hydrogen peroxide, which is very reactive, can react with biologically important molecules and therefore affect their function. Okay, even alcohol can be processed into things like acetyl coenzyme A, uh, or acetyl units which can then be used by the body okay so we have this important process of detoxification of by the liver as well finally it just I just think I, I think I just need to mention this idea that because this nutrient-rich blood is coming you know you, you're taken in food into your body um, from the environment, it's very likely that it has pathogens potentially on it, and in that case, it might it, it is important for the liver to do what it can to remove uh, some of the pathogens that might be present, and that might have also got into the blood through the digestive system. Okay, so as we'll see, the liver also has mechanisms to make sure that some of these pathogens can be removed as well. Guys, this is the big picture of what the liver does, okay? Um, it's important to understand, or at least know that it does this, because then the rest of the structure will make sense, I promise you.